So we finished up week one, and one of the things we want to try to do is take a quick review of some of the main themes that McClellan and Dorn are putting out there for us to try to get us to understand what's going on in this early transition from the Paleolithic world to the Neolithic world, and how science and, and technology in particular in human society work together to help to create the world in which we currently live. One of the first things to consider, perhaps, and one of the first things McClellan and Dorn do, is to talk to us about what is science and then what is technology. There are lots of definitions out there for these, and so I picked a couple that I liked. So first with science. One example, a branch of knowledge or study dealing with a body of facts or truths systematically arranged and showing the operation of general laws. For example, the mathematical sciences. A branch of knowledge, science, that is a branch of, that is knowledge, uh, or study dealing with a body of facts or truths, right? uh, systematically arranged, showing the operation of general laws. Right? So there are a lot of steps in that. Another definition, the systematic knowledge of the physical or material world gained through observation and experimentation. Systematic knowledge, so again, knowledge, information, pulled together in a system, and that knowledge of the physical or material world, the world around us, right, gained through observation and experimentation. Seems pretty straightforward. But there are some key elements there, right? There are the idea of using observation and experimentation to derive facts, to derive truths, and then to observe them in action. Technology. So what is technology? The branch of knowledge that deals with the creation and use of technical means and their interrelation with life, society, the environment, drawing upon such, such subjects as the industrial arts, engineering, applied science, and pure science. Oh, great. Now we have two kinds of science here, right? So technology, again, knowledge, the branch of knowledge that deals with the creation and use of technical means, tools, and their interrelation with life, society, and the environment. So it's not only um, a branch of knowledge, it's a branch of knowledge that leads to the creation of tools, and then how do those tools interact with us in society today? How do they help to uh, show who we are, how life may have changed because of this new technology? And then a very simple definition, the application of this knowledge, technology, for practical ends. So everyday uses, utilitarian ends, right? So developing, if you will, a, a cup that uh, allows me to drink something hot like coffee, right? That's one technology. Then there's a technology of crafting a tool that actually allows me to brew technology, brew coffee, excuse me. And then if you want to take a step back, the technology that allows uh, the agriculturalist, the farmer, to figure out how to grow that coffee, right? So there's lots of technology involved in that. And that's all very practical for me, at least, because I enjoy a nice cup of coffee, especially when I'm working on a concluding uh, video for uh, the first week of a class that's online using technology, studying science and technology. The final definition here, the sum of the ways in which social groups provide themselves with the material objects of their civilization. So, the various ways, all the ways, right, the, all the tools, all the knowledge, the sum of the ways in which, a, which social groups, maybe a family, maybe a community, maybe a whole uh, nation, provide themselves with the material objects of their civilization, material objects that can be bricks, to make a house, material objects that can be um, automobiles, material objects that can be the food that could get us back to that cup of coffee. So technology, the branch of knowledge that deals with the creation and use of technical means and the interrelation with life, society, and the environment. Connected to science? Absolutely. A, a different branch of study? Yes. 
And when we're looking at the uh, conclusions we want to draw from this first week, and again, we spend a little more time in this first week because we want to get all of our main ideas out there and then see how they build through time. Uh, technology is easier to find in our ancient societies, right? Fire. Talk about harnessing something from the material world for practical use. Water. Same thing. Plants. Getting a little higher end for us, right? How do we harness plants and make them serve our uses? Animals. How do we in the process change our society when we want to harness the, the, the power and the effects of water, fire, plants, and animals? So the application of knowledge for practical ends. Very much in evidence in Mesopotamia and in Egypt. Textiles. Uh, other te these are getting to be a little bit higher end uh, technology, if you will. Textiles, pottery, metallurgy. So working materials that we find in the natural world into different objects, if you will. They're still essentially pottery is still essentially um, what clay and water and 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 other other elements like silica. Uh, they're they're absolutely all that, but they've been changed to an object that has a different function, if you will, than it had previously. Writing, also a technology. Math, reckoning, uh, also technology. Is it pure science to say that 2 plus 2 is 4, or is that just really a technological observation? Right? So uh, that's one of the things that you'll be taking a look at when you look into um, uh, the more abstract math that we'll see the Greeks getting into. The sex adjustable system out of Mesopotamia, we've talked about that before, and here are just some more ind indications of it that uh, show up. It's, it's a fascinating system. I do like the image on your left of the hands. It's this idea that uh, each finger is divided into three sections, if you will, and so that makes it, uh, without the thumb, uh, very easy to see how a sex adjustable or a, a system of six showed up for counting. Um, so technology, all the things we've talked about before. Science, do we think that architecture is a science? It certainly involves writing, reckoning, calculation, but also observations. We uh, see McClellan and Dorn, and I did not go through it in your, in your section on Egypt, but even the Egyptians, when they were practicing their pyramids, started with mud brick and then went to, to carved stone, cut stone, quarried stone, uh, because that was uh, more durable and, and could do the things they wanted it to do. Uh, we have, for the example, in McClellan Doran, you'll see the Bent Pyramid, a pyramid that didn't quite make the proportions we like to see today, the, the actual pyramid geometric shape, they didn't quite get the math right. So we have some, some attempts, some, some experiments perhaps, in order to get that, that monumental architecture where we want it to be. Um, does that architecture require detailed observations? Absolutely. When you think about Stonehenge, we had to understand the movements, if you will, from the perspective of people on Earth, of the heavenly bodies. We had to understand the position of the sun vis-a-vis -vis certain seasons in order to get Stonehenge crafted in the way that people thought it useful, right? So that requires detailed observations. All of this uh, help us to understand the development of calendars in the ancient world. These are calendars, certainly very practical applications of monumental building, d detailed observations, mathematics, writing. Is it science? So that's one of the things we'll be working on as we move into our next section, right? Um, how much of this can we imagine is science? And we think there's some science here. Uh, there, again, just, just minimal, perhaps. Uh, when we get to the Greeks, we'll see uh, an approach to science and an approach to uh, research that is purely for the sake of wanting to know, that's not wrapped up in practical applications. See you next time.